a few safety considerations unique to dry suit diving. Using proper techniques, you can make thousands of dry suit dives without incident. But to be prudent, let's look at the hazards, cause, prevention, and correction to suit squeeze, excess buoyancy, excess air in the suit legs, and to a flooded dry suit. Suit squeeze occurs if you descend without adding gas to the suit. This can happen if you forgot to connect the inflator hose, if the valve malfunctions, if you're using an argon system and run out of argon, or if you simply forget. A suit squeeze can cause painful welts and bruises, and if you keep descending, it can restrict breathing. If you're descending and can add gas to your suit, immediately stop your descent. Use your BCD if you need to regain neutral buoyancy and abort the dive. Switch to the spare hose from your breathing regulator if you're using an argon system, but don't continue the dive if you can't put gas in your suit. You can avoid suit squeeze by checking your dry suit inflator valve before entering the water and by remembering to add air to your suit as you descend. If you're using an argon system, make sure you have enough argon for the dive. Excess buoyancy is a serious concern because it can lead to a runaway rapid ascent, which poses a risk of decompression sickness, lung expansion injuries, and other serious pressure injuries. One way this can happen is if your inflator valve sticks or freezes open, causing your suit to inflate rapidly. To correct this, immediately disconnect the inflator and dump the excess gas through the exhaust valve. Remember to position yourself so the exhaust valve is the highest point on the suit. You can avoid inflator valve problems by checking it before diving, by adding gas in short bursts, by maintaining your suit properly and having it serviced annually. Follow manufacturer's recommendations in water cold enough to call for sealed ice diving regulators that resist freezing. Although rare, an exhaust valve can stick shut, making it impossible to vent expanding air when you ascend. If you can, swim back down or grab something to stop your ascent. Control your ascent by releasing air from a wrist seal. You may get water in the suit doing this. You can release air from a seal anytime you can't get enough air to vent through the exhaust valve. Avoid a stuck exhaust valve through proper maintenance and by checking it before each dive. You have to offset too much weight by putting more gas in your suit. Expanding gas when you ascend can exceed what can dump through the exhaust valve. If this happens, stop and let the valve catch up. If necessary, hang on to something or release gas through a wrist seal. Then resume ascending more slowly so that expanding gas has time to vent. You avoid this by diving properly weighted. A lost weight system can lead to a runaway ascent. The techniques for lost weight apply to handling a runaway ascent of any kind in a dry suit. Of course, you can avoid losing weights by being familiar with your weight system and by inspecting it before each dive to be sure it's set up properly and secure. Your weight system may release if you don't secure it properly, or if you accidentally trip the release. If you can, grab the weights, but if you miss, you'll need to handle a runaway ascent. Dump as much gas as you can, and then grab a line if you can to slow your ascent. Otherwise, flare out facing the surface to create as much drag as possible. Make an R sound as you exhale each breath to assure an open airway and watch overhead for any objects that you may need to steer clear of. Excess air in your suit's feet or legs is caused by having too much buoyancy and then allowing your legs to get above shoulder level at the same time. This can cause an uncontrolled rapid feet up ascent, sometimes making your fins pop off and leaving you floating upside down at the surface. This is actually a rare problem because you can easily prevent it by avoiding excess buoyancy and by not ascending with your feet higher than your exhaust valve. There are several ways to get out of a feet up ascent. To perform a forward rollout, bend at the waist and kick forward until your head up. 
A backward rollout is the same technique, only in the other direction. The ball tuck method is useful if your legs are too full to swim effectively, or if there's no room to swim. Tuck, roll on your back, and dump air. Your instructor will have you practice these techniques. If you can stop the ascent and end up floating upside down at the surface, you may be too buoyant to get upright just by swimming. Inflate your BCD to bring your head up to the surface, then deflate your suit. If you take care of your dry suit, you'll have few, if any, incidents when your suit floods, but it can happen. Normally, you'll notice a leak as soon as you get in the water, but it can also take until you're into the dive before you notice a leak. Most leaks are minor and are caused by a damaged zipper, material caught in it, or failure to close it all the way. Seal leakage due to hair, dirt, poor adjustment, or damaged exhaust valve leakage due to poor maintenance, or tears and holes caused by wear, chafing, puncture, or delamination. Avoid leaks through proper maintenance and by closing the zipper carefully. If you do experience a leak, abort the dive. It's rare to have a massive flood that fills your suit with water. It's usually a cool, spreading drizzle that's not comfortable, but doesn't interfere with buoyancy control or even making your safety stop. If you do suffer a major flood, you may need to use your BCD to control your buoyancy. If your suit loses too much buoyancy, it may help to drop some of your weight, but be careful to avoid a rapid ascent. Depending how wet you become and the water temperature, it may be best to skip a safety stop and seek warmth immediately. Earlier you learned that dry suits require a bit more care than a wet suit. Let's take a look at how to maintain, store and pack your dry suit. Like all your gear, your first line of care is rinsing the suit in fresh water after using it. Zip the suit shut and be careful around the neck and wrist seals and you'll keep water from getting in. But if you've had more than minor leakage, or if you sweat a good bit, you'll want to rinse the inside of the suit too. Be sure to rinse the valves thoroughly. Then hang the suit to dry over a thick rod or something that avoids creasing. If you rinse the inside and will need it soon, hang it inside out. Avoid leaving the suit in one position for more than a day and don't hang it in direct sunlight. If you're not going to use the suit for a while, make sure it's completely dry. Then if you like, dust the seals with talcum powder as directed by the manufacturer. Tuck latex seals into the arms and body of the suit. By the way, do not use any silicone on any part of your dry suit. Even some seal preservatives have silicone and are not recommended by some manufacturers. If the zipper picks up any dirt or grit, clean it gently with mild soap and water and a soft toothbrush. Rinse and allow to dry. Do this before attempting to open the suit if it got really dirty during the dive. After cleaning, lubricate the zipper using paraffin zipper wax. Never use silicone or silicone spray on your dry suit zipper unless directed otherwise by the manufacturer. Put the cap on the inlet stem so it won't damage the suit. Then fold the suit up loosely with the zipper open. 